this is what happens when you record without AC bias using the record head, the natural record head. I just had a signal coming in from an iPad. And you hear the distortion. This is a Jay-Z song on the Notorious B.I.G. tape. But you hear the distortion. Some of you might recognize the song. Back to B.I.G. And that's what happens when you don't use AC bias. And that recording sounded so horrible and so distorted is because of the lack of AC bias. Here's the rationale for uh, AC bias. So basically, if you took a graph of the tape response, um, what you get on tape on the y-axis and the strength of the input signal on the x-axis here, you don't get a linear response. You get a response that looks kind of like this. And so um, what you're seeing is the, the entire signal, whatever waveform you put through into the input signal, comes out all uh, messed up based on, based on these relationships. So high signals don't get a response. Low signals don't get a response. But when you're in the linear region, when there's an increase here, um, you get a, a, a linear response on the tape based on the signal you put in. Um, and so the secret is to how do we get this uh, tape to get into the linear region. And the way we do that is by using AC bias. So what we do is you basically take um, a high amplitude, um, high frequency signal that's inaudible and what that does is it basically um, switches from here to here over and over and over and over and over again at a very high frequency, um, higher frequency than anything that's uh, audible or anything that's coming through uh, on the input signal of the tape. And what that does is it brings it into the linear region so um, repeatedly. So the way, the way to implement this is basically you take your AC bias signal and when you add it passively to whatever input signal you get, you get something like this um, coming through, which is a very high frequency signal that oscillates according to the input signal. Um, and it oscillates and it keeps these regions based on how much AC bias you put in there you keep the negative parts of the signal and the positive parts of the signal in the two linear regions. And so um, that way you get a normal, a much more normal response. And so um, your, what your resulting signal that you get on the tape is, is basically equivalent or should be as equivalent as possible to your input signal. Um, so how do we implement this on um, in circuitry is basically here's a block diagram and it's basically you you have to have an ac bias oscillator and their ac bias oscillator has to be at high amplitude uh about 30 to 90 volts peak to peak um and a very high frequency greater than 20 kilohertz so um and then what you do is you take that um, and you take your audio input signal, which, you know, you want to equalize it, you want to filter it and amplify it to correct levels so it's not too loud. If it's too loud, it, it gets distorted. And if it's too soft uh, or if it's uh, too low, uh, low frequencies get amplified a little bit easier. So you want to limit those. So you want to put it through some kind of a high pass filter. And uh, basically what you want to do is you mix these two signals passively. Um, here you want to be able to put a potentiometer so somewhere so that you can um, adjust the bias, the amount of bias that you get in order to keep this within the linear regions, the signal. Um, and so uh, 100k potentiometer here and a 10k potentiometer here. Um, and then you mix the two together passively and that gets output to the record head. Um, you know, one side of that goes to ground and that's the input of the signal. Uh, so the circuit that uh, I used for the AC uh, bias oscillator is as follows. Um, 
basically this is a, a modified a little bit from a, a circuit that has been uh, described previously and um, uh, cool dude Clem uh, used this in his video on the um, uh, tape recorder on his tape recorder project and basically this oscillator the way it works is um, the core of it is the erase head of your uh, uh, tape recorder if it's not a permanent magnet if it's an actual erase head um, designed the right way and this capa this 10 nanofarad capacitor um, so the erase head itself the coil is basically uh, of it is an inductor and um, uh, I don't know the exact uh, inductance of it but um, it's about it, it's in the 800 to 1000 micro Henry range and what this does is this is an LC tank circuit oscillator and this is basically at the core of the system and using two transistors a PNP uh, to pull and a P uh, and an NPN to push um, this creates a uh, class AB amplifier around this signal around this uh, oscillation and it amplifies it um, and when you uh, put it together this way, um, you get an output of about 90 uh, kilohertz um, at greater than 30 volts peak to peak um, when supplied with a 12 volt, just a single 12 volt uh, um, DC power supply. Um, and uh, obviously the signal goes to ground. And what you want to do is you want to put that out through a 330 picofarad capacitor to get rid of the DC offset so it centers the signal around the zero line. And this is the um, 100k, uh, um, the 100k potentiometer. And so what that does is it, uh, it adjusts the amount of the bias you mix with the input signal. So the audio input signal comes in through, through here and this is a 10k, this is a 10k signal. Uh, we're going to ignore the bias trap because this is not really necessary. Um, and your audio input signal is filtered, amplified. Um, the level of it is adjusted with this. And it's basically put out through a 10 uh, microfarad electrolytic capacitor, which centers the audio signal. And here's that 10k resistor uh, that uh, talks about here, which is uh, right there. And so that all gets mixed, passively mixed together and goes out to the record head. So uh, that is our, that is our signal. Um, and so um, that is what we're gonna try. Here's the AC bias circuit. And it's basically based off of uh, these two transistors and a push-pull amplifier using the um, erase head of the cassette deck as a inductor coil and um, and this um, it's hidden in there it's a 103 it's a 103 um, 10 nanofarad capacitor and uh, basically this is running off of a positive 12 volt circuit and here's the resulting waveform and it's a perfect stable sinus wave at um, a frequency of 100 kilohertz and um, 88 volts, 89 volts peak to peak, which is huge for a 12 volt uh, power supply. Um, and it's great, because now we can uh, use this and um, as our AC bias signal. Thanks for watching. Uh, and now I've built up this AC bias oscillator uh, using the BD140 uh, PMP transistor and the BD139 NPN transistor uh, because they can handle a lot more current and uh, higher voltage. And I put heat sinks on them. These guys are heat sinks, so they're not getting too hot. Um, and uh, basically, uh, the circuit is using the um, erase head of the cassette player um, or the cassette recorder as the inductor um, and 
that makes with a um, 10 nanofarad uh, capacitor, uh, an LC circuit, and that LC tank circuit oscillates at about 90 kilohertz here. And, um, you know, the this um, potentiometer just uh, adjusts how much of this goes into the output signal. So right now I have it set to fairly high. Um, you know, you can like see the, the circuit here. I could decrease it or increase it. Um, and so right now it's like at the one of the higher levels. And you can see here it's 56 volts peak to peak at 91.5 kilohertz. Um, and that's a pretty, uh, pretty high voltage. Um, for uh, something that's powered off of a 12 volt power supply. So um, this is working fairly well. And, uh, and basically this output of which is going to this, the record head. So if I wanted to record now, um, I have to mix it in passively through this 10 uh, microfarad uh, capacitor here. Um, and the input signal is gonna be coming from this wire right here. Uh, which is, I have to uh, plug into the audio source uh, signal. And there's a 10K capacitor or a 10K resistor um, that's mixing in with the bias uh, circuit so that we can feed in a record signal. Um, so that is the next step. But the, the waveform of this is rock stable, 60 volts peak to peak, 92 kilohertz here frequency, um, and uh, and it's a sign, it's a pretty stable looking, very pretty looking sine wave uh, that is generated. And so um, I'm gonna now add to this the audio signal and see what happens. So now this is the AC bias signal. And what I did here was I uh, took the DJ app, it's got a Jay-Z song playing here. And what I'm gonna do is, what I did was put it through um, an op amp to give it a little bit of an extra boost on the signal and um, put in the input of the mixing circuit, the passive mixer through a 10K um, resistor. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to see if the AC bias oscillator mixes nicely with this, uh, with this signal. So I'm gonna press play and we should start seeing the waveform jump up and down. But to, in order to be able to see it, since it's such a high current on, or a high voltage on this, I'm going to lower it down. And right now it's not really jumping, but now when I start to play the music, which is gonna happen right now, play, and let's see what happens. And you can see the waves start bouncing up and down. And so this is how the AC oscillator bias signal works. So if I, you'll see a better waveform if I just zoom out of it. Now you can sort of see at the top of it how it bounces according to the music. And if I stop it, it should theoretically not bounce anymore. All right, I just stopped it. Now it's sort of staying in one spot. Now I started it again, and here it goes. Okay. And this is uh, five volt divisions here. So let me see if I can make it go. Uh, I can't really do that. Okay, I can't really visualize it at the top with the scope. I could just see it this way. All right, well enough to know that there's a signal coming through. So now the output of this, which is being read by the um, uh, oscilloscope, is going to the record head. So theoretically, if I play record, if I press record now, it will record the audio coming in along with this uh, AC bias, and it should do the trick. So let's see what happens. So now we're recording this signal from a Jay-Z song um, onto the tape.
and uh, with this AC bias and the signal superimposed on top of it. Um, so let's see what it sounds like in a minute. Now I've recorded a little bit of that Jay-Z song onto this tape with that circuit that I showed. And let's hear what it sounds like. It's gonna be loud. All right, it records. Now, I think, I suspect we just have to I suspect we just have to adjust the recording uh, level um, and uh, do provide some equalization uh, because the low frequencies um, get amplified a lot more than the uh, higher frequencies. Um, so I think that is uh, worked out okay with this record head circuit. So now uh, with the AC bias, it records on the tape just fine. So here's what the sound looks like on the oscilloscope recorded from the tape. It's all distorted because I have no equalization on it. But you get a three plus volt peak to peak signal, which is loud. One quick note about the transistors on uh, this uh, AC bias oscillator. Um, you can do this with regular PNP and NPN transistors, but um, the signal you get is not gonna amplify as high as, uh, as you need it to, to get the um, high voltage oscillation. And um, the current that you're going to generate with this is going to be really, really high. And these transistors are going to get really, really hot. And so um, you need transistors that are, um, that are going to handle um, more than an amp of current. Um, and so conventional NPN, general purpose NPN and PNP transistors like the 2N2222 and the 2N3906 or 3904 uh, won't handle that as high and you'll blow them out and you'll burn, you know, you'll create a little fire in your uh, breadboard. Um, so re highly recommended to use transistors like these. These are um, uh, BD140 is the PNP and it's complementary uh, NPN transistors, the BD139. And these can handle uh, almost three amps of uh, current flowing through them. And as you'll see in the oscillator, uh, what we get is um, uh, is pretty uh, pretty high um, in terms of the AC bias that's uh, that comes through there. Um, so these also get warm, but these can dissipate a lot uh, of power, and um, you might want to use a heat sink with these because they have the little uh, the little hole to screw into a heat sink. Luckily. Um the song is distorted enough that um, <laughs> nobody could hear any of the bad words that JC that Jay Z is saying. But um, I'm trying to make this a kids friendly channel. In any case, um, let's see what the next uh, let's see what it sounds like with some equalization. We'll uh, try that in the next video. Thanks for watching.